I should not take up the minister means because I see that um, because I lot that I was not able to write here, that I'm not able to put here. But I see in my heart that God is not really looking for multitude to do great things in our midst. He's looking for few people that are going to bring multitude. He's not looking for multitude to go and bring multitude. And um, if I was thinking like, even though I think I was sensing little by little, but I was not sensing so much like when I began to sat down and write. I began to write all these things yesterday, and I wrote all this yesterday, you know. Uh, I think maybe on Wednesday night stroke um, yesterday, yes. No, on Tuesday night stroke um, yesterday. And if I was sensing like this, I would have just said the worker that they should not worry to come. That let us let God deal with us as leaders very well, you know. But I was, and I felt that way. Maybe it's still it's, it's late to do that. To say, worker, don't come again. Let God deal with the ministers. Then the worker is going to see the effect in our life. But I'm praying that these few days, even today and tomorrow, God will still do something great Amen. in our midst. Amen. And as many of us, because I see that many of us as ministers, we are too many already for what God wants to do. I'm sensing that we are too many for what God wants to do. And that's what I was thinking. And maybe the worker don't even need to come. But we don't know, maybe among God, maybe God will only find one person or two person or two or three. Maybe among the ministers, God will, among the worker, God will find more people. But I want you to know that God wants to do a quick work, great work in our midst. And he's not looking for one, two, among God has been to, he wants to use totally. He wants to use wholeheartedly. That will release himself unto, unto, he release him or self or herself unto him, and we we'll begin to see that may not be too much teaching, may not be a long teaching, but it's going to be an effective one. And I believe that. As God began to speak, you will begin to sense in your spirit, in your heart, what God wants to do through you. And what, if you are available, if you want to uh, really surrender yourself. It doesn't mean that many of us will still not be working, but it will mean that not many of us will be effective. And God is looking for effectiveness. God is looking for effectiveness. You know, before I began to write this message, my thinking, my thoughts of what I want to talk about, the Holy Spirit, thank God because, you know, I planned the Abbey not to just be going back to note and, and be looking at the old note to write. You know, I want to receive fresh things. But, you know, when you talk about Holy Spirit, all my vision, all my mind, I've been talking about, you know, great things, talking about the gift of the Spirit, you know, talking about those powers, just going to the end, not really looking at the beginning. And we will get to that level. But God began to show me, show me, open my eyes to little, little things that brought the Holy Spirit. Little, little things that allowed the Holy Spirit to stay little little area that make room for the Spirit of God to walk. And I began to put them down. I began to write them. And as I'm writing them, I was praying for myself. And I'm praying that God will touch me myself. God will help me to be available for him. And God will see many of us also, as many of us that are ready for his use. 
in the name of Jesus. Because I felt that this is the time God is, you know, expecting us to bring great souls unto his kingdom. Expecting us to win more souls, not by our own power, not by our own strength, but by his own spirit. It's going to be less talking, less preaching, but great manifestation in the name of Jesus. People will be coming to the church that we will not even need to do night vigil prayer, you know, great prayer as we used to call it, or it will not even be a prayer meeting, and they will begin to receive healing. They will begin to have a encounter with God in the mighty name of Jesus. But you know, we need to, God is looking for people that are going to make that atmosphere possible for Him. God is going to make, look, He's looking for men, brethren, brothers and sisters among us that will make the atmosphere, you know, workable for God. You know, the Bible says, um, I, I don't know, maybe it's in the book of Luke or so, maybe the media can help me find that. The Spirit of God was present, or the power of God was present to him, but the people were not available. The power of God was present. I see God's power present in this place. And I do not want us to be found wanting when God is set to work. And we will not be found wanting in Jesus' name. So, we begin to study, you know, like I said, it's a lot. And I say a lot in my own notes that is not here, but I'm trusting God to speak whatever He wants us to learn, whatever I want us to know at this time, to release unto us in the name of Jesus. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, you know, the theme is the Holy Spirit, and I'm talking on encountering and engaging the Holy Spirit. Our encountering, encountering and engaging the Holy Spirit. How do we encounter the Holy Spirit? How do we engage the Holy Spirit in our midst, in this church, to walk? And how do you encounter it? So, I'm beginning with the encountering of the Holy Spirit. But before we talk about the encounter, let me just do a few more introduction on what the Holy Spirit is and what the Word of God has said. In the book of Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 29, Joel 2, 20 to 29, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servant, upon the servants and upon the handmaid in those days will I pour out my spirit. That's the word of God unto us. And that's the prophecy that I've gone ahead. And that is the prophecy that we want to come to pass in our life. As it came to pass in the book of Acts, the Bible says, and they assembled themselves together, and Jesus commanded them from the book of Acts, chapter 1. He commanded them and said, They should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days. This is a power that we are waiting for God to release upon us. You know, because without engaging the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. We can do nothing for Him. Our service for Him will be fruitless. And so we want to begin to engage the Holy Spirit more and more. But there are processes. If you want to engage the Holy Spirit, we want the Holy Spirit to be put to work. You want him to walk through us. If you don't know him, you don't encounter him, there's very little that we can do. There's very little that we can do. And so that's why we want to seek 
in this meeting. And you know, for the past few months, we've been got to talk about um, the new creation. And we see from Genesis, when God began to form the heart, Bible says the sweet of God was upon the deep, you know, and God said, now the spirit of God, there will be an atmosphere, that's what we want to create. That's what God is looking for. An atmosphere where God can speak and say, let there be light, and there will be light. The atmosphere that we come and we can say, let there be healing here, and there will be healing. The atmosphere that God can freely walk in our midst, there will not be hindrances. That God can say, let this be, and it should be. That's the kind of atmosphere that God is looking for in our midst. And when I'm talking about the atmosphere, it's people. That God can freely walk in their midst without entrance. And I put some scripture here, but let me just jump over them to talk about the Holy Spirit. Just few things that we know about the Holy Spirit. We know that it's the, I, I mentioned this scripture. Let me just mention them without reading them. I know I tried to put as much on this in this notes. John 1 1, John 1 14. And I think it's good that I don't read them and connect them together, at least few of them. In John chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible said the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was God. In the beginning was the word. Now in verse 14, he says, And the word became flesh, and it dwelt among us. That means that word that was in the beginning. It became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. And John chapter 6, verse 3 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth; The flesh profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So we see the word now becoming the spirit and becoming life. He said in that fact, John 1 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now the word is spirit and is life. It's life. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the word. I am that word, the word that became life. No man come unto the Father but by me. Now in chapter 14, verse 17 and 18, Jesus emphatically said, even the spirit of truth whom the word cannot receive, because he see him not. Neither know it. Why? They didn't see it. They don't know. You know, I wish I have enough time to start from verse 1 of this John 14. We had Thomas began to engage Jesus and say, we don't know you. And he said, I've been dwelling among you all these years, and you don't know me. And he began to tell them who he is. So he said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because he see him not, neither know anything, but you know him. The spirit of truth, you know him. And he's telling you, you know him. So we are talking about all this. We said, you know him. For he did what? He dwell with you and shall be in you. What you know him already. The world did not know. And he's the one. And when they come to that John chapter 16, he said, He now told them, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Albeit when he, I want you to note, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine. So you see that he's actually talking about himself. That the spirit cannot be separated from him. And shall show you it unto you. All things that the Father art are what? They are mine. Continue to emphasize it. All that the Father has, they are mine. And those are the things that the Holy Spirit wants to tell, show to us. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. I'm trying to just show us in this summary to say when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we are talking about a person. 
It's not just the wind, it's not just the, um, it's not just any other thing. It's a person. And that person is Christ himself. The only just choose to come in that form. So it's not when we are talking about this way that you are receiving a wind or receiving something that cannot be identified. He is a person. And is the person that we want to receive. Is the one that wants to fill us. And is the one that wants to exercise his power and authority through us. Now, from the Bible passages that we are, is our anchor co focus, Acts chapter 1. Now I begin to talk about how to encounter this. So when we're talking about to encounter, I've told you he is a person. He is not just a thing. He is not just something. He is a person. And the personality is Christ himself. He's the one that wants to dwell. He's the one that wants to empower us. And now you will begin to say, the, while I said that God doesn't need too many people, or God just needs people that will be available. But as many as are available that are ready, God is not going to send anybody back. God is going to use us, but we must be ready to be available and to be ready for his use. And if you are not ready, there's room for you to be ready. There's room for you to be ready. You can always be ready. And I do not want us to be like the brother of David. I don't want us to be like that brother of David. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, God to Saul and said, go into the, and uh, Samuel, and said, go into the house of um, Jesse, and go anoint me a king. You know, the reason why God organized that meeting is to anoint how many people? One person. One person. But see all the ceremony. I am praying that you will not just be a ceremonial minister. Amen. You will not just be a ceremonial Christian. Amen. See all the ceremony. Now said unto Samuel, how long without mourn for Saul? See, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill your home with oil and go. And you know, this is talking about the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit wants to come upon someone afresh. I want to start a fresh walk. I want to start something that I've never been started and not done before. I want to do something special. He said, fill your home with, 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 uh, with oil. You know, and I'm sensing. I know there's somewhere here that God uploaded this scripture now. But I know there's somewhere here that was saying that I hear God asking, where are thou? Now, this is telling us that God is saying to us, how long will you mourn? That means God is already, is ready, is tired of some people that have been disappointing him. And he's not ready to remove them. Not just specifically for us as a church. God is tired because what God would have just told Samuel is, it was Samuel that ordained Saul, right? So what God would have just told Samuel is that, go back to Saul. Tell him that his time of um, his reigning has done what? Has ended. Because he was the one. But I felt that from what Samuel said, and from what Samuel said, give me first two, from what Samuel said, I felt that something has happened. And Samuel said, how can I go? If so, hear it. He will do what? I don't know how that happened. Do you remember when Samuel wanted to annoy Saul? If you look at all the events, Samuel told Saul, stay here. And Samuel did what? Saul did what? He stood there. Someone told him, I said, come, you are coming with me today to go and eat. Saul so did not argue nothing. He didn't say anything. He was obedient to the call. 
Now Samuel now that will talk to Saul and say, Saul, sit down. And Saul will sit down. That will prophesy to Saul and to Samuel and to Saul and say, You are going to, as you are going now, you will meet this, you will meet this. What you have been looking for, they have found it. Don't bother yourself. Now that Samuel is saying, Saul, if he here, he will do what? He will. That means Samuel at this time, a Saul at this time, has become more powerful. Sir? He was He has become more powerful than what Samuel can handle. I am sure that there is no one that is. You are not becoming more powerful now. Because you are being a Christian, you have known everything. Now Samuel have known, Saul have known everything. You even remember that in chapter 13, was it chapter 13? Saul asked him to wait. And Samuel asked him to wait. Now Samuel is not, Saul is not afraid to go and to go and be making sacrifice. Because uh, how would I put it in Yoruba now? In English now. What you read Samuel is. Yeah, thank you. I think that's the right word. Otiri Samuel. Huh? I think that's the right word. He has said the. He has seen finish. He has seen him finish. So what again will I fear? He yeah, what again? Some of us maybe you have seen God finish. Say so what again now? Even so, when we call now for service, no, no quickening, no. Uh, how would I put it? No, no, no see. No, no seal again. No seal again. So all that God would have told Samuel is that go and tell Saul. His kingdom is what? It's so bad. You should forget. But if Samuel should try it, his head will go. Now, Samuel said that. That's all that God told him. He said, go and do. But now, all the other things that happened. They are not part. They are not part of the program. But they are ceremony that will be carried out for God to see David. They are ceremony. And this retreat, like I said, God is looking for few people and praying that you will not be part of the ceremonial people. You will be part of the people that will receive oil, the Holy Ghost, the freshness, the power afresh in the name of Jesus. We'll be part. And so, and I said, we should not be like the brother of David. So please give me back that scripture. Go down. I think we'll Let's forget all the ceremony because that apart from other people, and just a call, thank you for it. And just a call, I've been like and make him to pass before Samuel. And he said, No, we step before I've been like that. Eliab, yes. And it came to pass when they were come, they are come for meeting. And when they look on Eliab, he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Man of God can make a mistake. If somebody like Saul and Samuel, that the Bible said that his word did not fall to the ground, if he made this mistake, it's possible for any man of God to make a mistake. But thank God for God. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. I have refused him. Now my concern, like I said, we should not be. When God said I have refused him, Eliab, I felt that Eliab, he would have knelt down. He would have cried. He would have wept. He would have been broken. I said, God, I am the firstborn in this place. I am the first member in this church. They recognize me in this place. I am 
the one that usually come first to church. I am the one that open doors. I am the one that sets this. I'm the one that receive people. I am the first one. God, I am the one to see all this one that came before me. You would have cried and said, God, what do you see in me? That make you to reject me and say you refuse me. Elia did not cry. The next place you will see Brother Elia. The next place, he jumped to chapter 17. He became Saul servant. He jumped and he went to the church of Pastor Saul. He left that place, went to Pastor Saul. And you know Pastor Saul also in chapter 13. He had been rejected. Now another person was rejected in chapter 17 and chapter 16. And they are mighty there. He went to another area. The short department of Saul. The man that doesn't care about her much, doesn't care about the presence of God, doesn't care. He went there. And so when David appeared in that chapter 17, at the battlefront, do you know what Eliab said? Eliab was the first one that accused him. The man that had been rejected, that had been refused, he was on the battleground. He's in the church and he was active, praying, was leading prayer, was doing something. A man that should cry. And that's why I said, don't be like that. In this meeting, we should not be like that. We should not be. Instead of crying and say, God, the hoid that you have in this place, this oil must not pass me by. What is it that you see in me that will make you to refuse me? That will not let me be able to kill Goliath? You know, if we do not allow God, yeah, if we do not allow God to be able to, to, to deal with us, the hope we may escape the hoid. And I do not want us to escape the hoid. Because I said the hoid is on us. What key Goliath? I want to thank God for the testimony and all that God has prepared David to do. But because of that hoid, he made Goliath to just be a piece of bread. There are Goliath that we're going to face in 2023. There are Goliath that is coming. But if there is a hoid upon us, Goliath will become a piece of bread in the name of Jesus. No matter how strong, how mighty that Goliath may be, no matter how you have been terrifying several people, but before us, it will fall in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's why you must, we must make sure we must do our best to make sure that we do not allow this season to pass us. Don't just come because of ceremony. Don't just come because it's just retreats that we have to do. Come because you must go with something. Make sure you do not live here. And it doesn't matter whether you are the youngest, maybe by age or by coming to church or by any standard. As long as your heart is right, God is ready to pour the oil. God is ready to release the oil in the name of Jesus. So let's make sure you do not leave we will not leave this meeting and go back and continue the company of rejected people and continue the company of men. I saw these several things. Told David, I said, well, let me give you this. Thank God for David that he was, he knew God. He knew God. He said, no, those are the things that you have been using. Samuel saw, told him, I said, you are going to face Goliath. Goliath has been warrior right from his youth. And you, you are a youth. Uh, David said, no, it's not by age. It's not by stature. It's not by youthfulness. It's by the anointing. It's by the Holy Ghost. And I pray that that Holy Ghost will come upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. That's the first instruction that God is putting in my heart to let us know 
that you come into this place, don't allow this oil to be wasted. Don't be a ceremonial person. Don't be a ceremonial. Many may be comfortable with ceremony. Money may be, many of us may be okay standing at that junction of ceremony, but you, you should not be okay. So, in High Chapter 1, from verse 4 to 5, now we begin to talk about how you encounter the Holy Ghost so that we can pray. Jesus said unto them, and being assembled together, he commanded them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but they should wait for the promise of the Father, which he said unto them, You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from this time. Now, the first thing I put here is to learn to wait. Is to learn to wait in his presence. Is to learn to wait for him. He told them, I said, go and tarry. Go and wait. And just like I said, when he told these people, all of them follow him to that month. There is no formal invitation. There is no room for, ah, me, he told us, now let me go back home first. Because we know that it's not, there was no information, there was no invitation, there is no, no room that you will tell them to wait. He just told them, go as you are going now. Go and wait. And the Bible said that all of them, they went and they wait. So our primary purpose that will let us encounter the Holy Spirit is to learn to wait in His presence. Is to learn to wait. I know this age, the more we are thinking that the age will be... Um, we are thinking that the technology is taking over, taking over, and the more we see that even the technology is taking over, it's not waiting. It continues. It continues to fly and moving on. You know, today somebody sent a, I think, to the main page, you know, sent a new development of technology that is coming that we should be getting ready for. You know, and I think he mentioned two things. I forgot the name, but I think it's uh, one is road top. Uh, is it road top or something? Like a laptop, is it? It's called road top. That is just like a small, small. Uh, I can't remember the way he described it, you know. But it's a small thing. That you just roll it. You just put it on your shoulder, and anywhere you get, you just roll it down. It has the screen. It has everything. It has the charger and everything. And now, so the laptop that we carry now will just be become outdated now, if that technology is a true one. But I know that at least somebody conceived it. Very soon we begin to see that. And they also talk about GPS and mail of and actually, and I know that one is true because I saw the woman been talking about it. I forget, is it V, is it VGS that they call it again? That is VGS, Visualize, um, I'm not sure, but I'm not really sure what. Um, but he said that GPS, you know, when you use GPS, you get to the place and the tail will be telling you turn right. You don't know maybe it's a it's the next one that all the road is still in the front. And you know many of us you have missed the road because of that. Because the the, the way the GPS. So is there now they are they are having a an advanced G, G, GPS. Maybe it's VGS they mention it. Um, and so nobody's among the main group that we saw it. Or it's only me that saw the thing. Okay, don't worry, maybe this maybe you have not seen it yet. So have you, and the first one telling you that once you get to that kind of junction now, the camera will just be on. And it will be showing you that street directly. And they will actually, you will actually see where you're supposed to Instead of be thinking, turn right on, you'll be seeing where you're supposed to turn. And it will, it will be very easy. Now, that's the technology that is advanced in the game. And it continues to advance like that. It continues to move on like that. And if we are just redundant, we just stay like that, we just continue the way we are, we will become busier and busier and busier. 
we will continue to be busy. Don't think that the world will ever slow down. It will not slow down. It will continue to put us on our toes, on our feet, and on our toes to continue to run, to continue to run. That's the way the world will continue to occupy us. The world will begin continue to make things easy for you to advance. Continue. Some of all that you know, you're already struggling whether you work in the house or not. Don't worry, you will be working more days. They will continue to do technology that will make it easier, more profitable for you to work at home. And you'll be thinking that that is an advantage. It's an advantage for people that understand and that can really want to serve God. But for several others, they will see it as an opportunity. It's time for me to do this. At least I'm in the house. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can get this degree. You know, I can get this job. I can get this another job. And you will be able to do. You know, some of us, sorry, I don't know, maybe is 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 uh, someone like that among us. Your within eight hours, you are doing two jobs. Two full jobs. Some people, within the same hour, they are doing two full jobs between the same eight hours. Why is that possible? Because you are in your house. And you know how to manage things. And by the time you do that, you have already explored all the strength and the energy that you have. And some that do not do the job, you don't do within 16 hours, you don't give, left, leave one job. Instead of, you know, if you have to drive one hour at another job, you will have things. But now you don't need to drive. You don't finish one job, you, maybe you have two laptops, you shake all, you have two applications, you just shake the application and you start another job. You get occupied and you move on like that. Now after you have worked that 16 hours, because you see that you can still make the money, no time to sit down, no time to wait at his presence, no time. And that is what the technology is taking us to. And that's why God is looking for people that will wait on him. People that money is not going to, uh, how will I put fed you more money? <laughs> Please give me a word to use for. Entice. Hmm? Huh? That did not. Eh? Fed you. Well, please just help me put because I think I will only explain to sit down. Entice. Entice. Okay, because entice is not it's not capturing my. It's not just entice. Captivate. Enticing. And captivate. You know, over the fed you more, and you cannot but capture that money. That is what is will be happening. The, because you see it's opportunity. It's great opportunity. You say, what am I losing? I'm in my house. And there's opportunity for me to get this and get this and get this. And we become richer, richer in our pocket and become poorer and poorer. And the church is becoming lean. And becoming lean, and becoming lean, we have we will have fat money, fat account. In fact, that time our building, if we have to build, it will be very easy to build. But building without quality people, building without people to sustain the building, building without men that can sustain the power, the presence of God. And it will now become a ceremony of years. That is why we need the Holy Ghost. That's why God is saying, wait! Go and tarry at Jerusalem. Go and tarry, go and stay. God is looking for men that will wait. Wait on him. You know what waitress does? Many of us have gone to a restaurant, you see waitress. They wait on you. They wait. They wait on you to serve you, to give you this. They wait on you to see what you want to eat, what is, your, what is in your mind. They wait on you. They are not far away. So they can you want to call them. 
So God is saying, go and wait. Wait. And you see the primary purpose that God is calling us is to wait. The world is exhausting our strength. The world is taking away our strength. So God is bringing us back and saying, wait. In Genesis, just like I was saying the other time, that was the same fellowship. Relationship that Hedam and Eve, they have. Until God came and God was asking, where are thou? Even though they were hearing the voice of God, but they are not in the presence of God. They are there, but they are not there. There's a difference between there and here. So they are not here where God is. They are there. There's a difference between they are in the church. But God is still saying, where are thou? They are saying, I'm here. God, we heard your voice. But we cannot feel you again. We cannot see you again. We can only hear your voice. There are so many other things that is taking away our time. And God is saying, wait. And the disciples, they went and they waited. So if we want Holy Ghost to be sustained, brethren, we don't just want this to be a one-time affair. God is not planning it to just be a one-time affair. And like I've told you, the world is not going to slow down. The world will continue even increasing the speed. He will continue increasing the speed. Increasing the speed. You know, I was showing my wife something yesterday. I want her to enter the door and want to put her finger on it. And you know, we thought it's going to take long time because the one we've been doing has been taking long time. And within a few minutes, my wife said, ah, yeah. This one. <laughs> Very few in me. Not long. Her finger is already printed. Open the door. And that's how the world will be continued. That's how the world will continue. I'm trying to bear a bed. Trying to bear the bed. And I see this bed. I said, you can put it on sleep mode. You can put it on TV mode. When you put it automatically, it's going to begin to do something. I was looking. It's God that will help me. You know, God that will help us. I you want to sleep on that kind of bed? I you want to wake up? To pray. You want to wake up to pray? The bed that has sensed all your body system. And I look at how tired you are and program your sleep according to how tired you are. And you, and you program your sleep according to how tired you are. So the bed will have carried you far. And you that you want to quickly wake up, you will not, you will not be able to wake up. The alarm, you will not hear any alarm. The world is going far like that. To put us in his own mode. And that's why God is calling us back. And God is saying, come, wait on me. Wait on me. Wait on me. In Exodus chapter 3, in, Apotheon, in, in chapter 2, chapter 2 first, Moses has already been working for God. You know, he has even <coughs> done great things for God. But in chapter 3, verse 1, oh, I don't think it's verse 1. Okay, from verse 2. God now called Moses. And when you come onto that, uh, let me see that verse. Is it verse 1? Okay, verse 3 of chapter 3. The Bible says, Moses now said, I will now turn aside. Thank I will now. In me, this man has been here, he has been saying that before. And though Moses in chapter 2 has been walking, he, sat, he killed an Egyptian. He did a miracle. <laughs> but God said, this one, you don't have time to wait. If you continue like this, you will soon die. You will soon fizzle out. And that's why many of us you know, because we don't have time to wait, our strength has already been reduced. And we know some people, their strength has gone. For that, Moses to recover, Moses had to go for 40 years. 40 years to learn, and God see that this man, he has learned to wait. 
He has now to be coming to that month of Horeb. He has now to be coming because that month of Horeb is another name, is the month of God. He has now to come into that point. And when he was ready, that was when God is able to send him. I pray we will no longer delay God. We will no longer allow God to wait. We will no longer allow God to, to, to keep asking, where are thou? Where are thou? When there is a there are great things to do in this church. And like I told you before, when God told them in that act and said, go. Several of them had things that they are doing. But all of them, they went and they waited. They waited, and they waited, and that was how they can encounter the power. They built their altar. They built their communion with him. That period of waiting, building of our communion, our relationship with him, waiting in his presence to hear the word of God, waiting in his presence to know his mind as ministers, leaders. You want to know his mind concerning the department. Concerning the department God has given to you. You want to wait to know what God is saying. You have time. If you don't have time to come to his presence, how will the people that we are leading, how will they have time to come to his presence? How will they wait? In Luke chapter 10. I think I'm going to stop at that point so that we can be able to pray. Then I will continue. So that you can be able to build Rebuild your altar. You can be able to see all the things that have been taking away our time. That we are not set to. What it means set to? Set to down. Set to down. Set to down. Wait, set to, set to, set to down. God is saying set to down. Look at Luke. Luke chapter, chapter 10. Now he came to pass, verse 38. As they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Received him. Martha is the one that received him. He's the first one. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about with more serving. More serving. This year as we go, for us to maintain and receive the Holy Ghost, we must not be combined with more service. Service must not be the preoccupied, the preoccupation of our hearts. Serving, combat. And he said, and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care? That my sister had left me to serve alone. Be it her, therefore, that she helped me. Verse 41. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, 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 mm. thou art careful and troubled about many things. But Mary has found but one thing is needful. One thing is needful. And Mary has choosing that good part. It's a choice. That's one thing I want to show you in that place. Mary has choosing. It's a choice. There are many things. It's your choice. Tonight is your choice. He has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. There are choices that can be taken away. There, are, there is a choice that cannot be taken away. What you receive in his presence cannot be taken away. He cannot be taken away. So it cannot be taken whether you are in dominion of glory or you go to glory of the dominion or you go to any church. You have something that cannot be taken away from you. And you know everything. This is the truth. This is the truth that you know hear from many people of us in redeem. This is the truth. Redeem, we have a system and a structure that lets you keep climbing. 
that lets you keep going. That lets you keep going. That are structure in redeem. That move you from worker to minister, from minister to pastor, from pastor to parish pastor, from parish pastor to soda pastor, from soda pastor. That are structure and nobody will change it. There are structure. They don't bring out some people that I saw some lady, some people that wants to be zona pastor and provincial pastor. You know, I was grieved in my spirit. But there is nothing I can do than this that I'm doing. To let us be people that are not structural people, that are not ceremonial people. The church. David is there. Someone must annoy somebody. But there are people that we structure, we bring them. And I do not want any one of us here to pass through this place and be a structural Christian. And be a ceremonial one. Structure may, is not a bad thing. It may bring you to that place. But you need to choose not to be a structural Christian. You need to choose not to be a ceremonial one. You need to choose to be the anointed one. It's our choice. You need to choose to sit in his, in, 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 in his presence. You need to choose to make sure you have a seat in his presence. Bible says that Mary has found it that nobody will take away. That is what God needs for his work to move on. That is what God needs. For us to engage the Holy Spirit, He wants you to encounter it. But you cannot encounter it by being a man of many things. Give me that first and care message, then I will, I will just, I think I stay, I still have 10 minutes to pray. One thing is essential, and Mary has chosen it. Give me verse 41 before this. The Master said, Martha, Dear Martha, you are few sin. Mm. Far too much. And getting yourself worked up over what? You know, be a minister of nothing. In Jesus' name. For Mary has found, Mary has found the good part. And Mary has choosing it. The only one thing is essential. And what is that? Waiting. Being in his presence. Learn to be in his presence. In the morning, you learn to wake up. You be in his presence. In the night, you learn to be in his presence. Not just because you want to do quiet time to keep record. That yes, I do quiet time today. But to do quiet time to keep record that you are at his feet. May the Lord help us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's rest as we just pray. Talk to God. Yes. Talk to God in your own way. Lord, the oil must not pass by my head. This oil must not pass by. What are the things that have been preoccupying me? What are the things that have taken me over? That's not allowing me to wait. It's not allowing me to receive anything. I, I, it's not allowing me to receive. He's not allowing me to receive. By the time you come to his presence, you are already tired. You're already snoring. You're already, your mind has gone. Because there are so many things. There are so many things your mind is calculating. He's calculating. God is saying, where are thou? Where are you? Tonight, I want you to, the few moments I have to pray, I want you to get space for yourself. Get a space. You know, it's a retreat. In fact, like I said, when I sense God is want to really talk to us as leaders, I felt like we should turn this meeting to just fasting retreat. When I felt that, but it was, we have already gone far. Like that. if it was my personal one, I would have just go ahead and do that. We have already made some provision. 
But maybe I would have even still been radical enough. But maybe I'm not there yet. Maybe it's part of my own lack of zeal too. Maybe God will also encounter me in a fresh in this meeting. You know? But I want to get space for yourself and say, God, no. I must not go by rejecting. No. I must not be occupied. What are the things that preoccupy me? Begin to think and pray. Matter, matter. You are careful about many things. Many things have preoccupied you. And the master is waiting. He said, Man, Mary, I find something. I want to find that. Find that. That will not allow, that cannot be taken away from you. That cannot be taken away from you. Find it. Find it. What cannot be taken away from you. I want to pray to God and say, God, no. I'm in this meeting. Holy Spirit must not pass me by. The heart must not pass me by. My head must not reject the heart. What is it in me that may allow you to push me aside? Push those things out of my life. What are those preoccupations? What are those that have preoccupied me before you come? Lord, begin to help today. There will be space for the Holy Spirit. There will be space for this power. For this anointing, for the grace that God is releasing. Lord, I must not just be a minister, occupy that place. Occupy that place, just because there is no more, no more, no more, no only nobody that can occupy it. So let your put that sister there. Or let your put that brother there. Let God know you are there. And the Holy Spirit will meet you in that place. Don't just set the structure. Not because we have structure, we need to have ministers, we need to have deacons, we need to have pastors. No, don't let that structure defeat you. Don't let that structure defeat you. Thank God and say, God, I am here. I am here. I'm the minister of the department. Something must happen to my life. Something must happen. There must be time for you. Something must happen. Something must happen to me. Lord, I am creating time. In the name of Jesus. Dispossess me of everything that has possessed me. You need to pray that personal deliverance prayer for yourself. Those things that have preoccupied you. Many things that you have gathered together. And those things is moving God far and far and far. The love for God, for God is far and far. The love for God is far and far. It's far and far. You have... Time to do so many other things. But when it comes to these things of God in His presence, where you receive strength, no time, no time, no time, no time. God help me. Help me, Father. I, 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 I don't want to be a ceremonial pastor. I don't want to be a, 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 a structural pastor. That's all because of structure. Lord, that's why I'm a pastor. No. God help me. Moses said. God, if you will not go with me, ah, God, I'm not moving again. I, 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 you know, I pray God will do something in our heart that tonight some of all you will go back and say, God, what, what is this nothing I'm pushing myself about? God, if you will not go with me, I, I can't go. You need to reassure me that God, my presence is with me. Your presence is with me. I need your presence. What am I saying? About waiting. Is that we have lost his presence. And we need to wait to get his presence. We need to wait to get that his presence back in our midst. We need to wait. God is waiting for people that will create time to be at his feet. They prefer to be at his feet than to be on the throne of the world. They prefer to be at his feet than to be on that executive chair. They prefer to be at his feet than to be the director in that office. They prefer to be at his feet than to be the director in that school. They prefer to be at his feet than to be the governor in the state. They prefer. Then he said, One thing have I desire. One thing have I desire. One thing is to behold your glory. Lord, 
today. Lord, help me in the name of Jesus. Help me, Father. Help me, Lord. Take me away from all those things that I'm possessing. Dispossess me from all the things that I'm possessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help me, Father. Help me, hold on. In the name of Jesus. Save me back from every pursuit of nothing. All the things that can be taken away. Lord, I want what cannot be taken away from me. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I need your presence that cannot be taken away. Oh, Lord, help me. I need your presence that cannot be taken away from me. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I need your presence. I need your presence. I need your, your presence. I need your presence. I need your presence. All the things that have occupied my heart. Lord, push them out. Push them out. Push them out. In the name of Jesus. Draw me back unto your presence. Draw me back to your presence. Draw me back unto where you met your man. In the name of Jesus. We saw the first message went three thousand. Second one five thousand, and the church grew and multiplied and increased greatly. Lord, what will make you to be increased? This church to be increased. Your great, your presence to be increased. Do it in our life in the name of Jesus. Lord, find us, find us, find us. <laughs> Every area, everywhere we have been hiding, Lord, locate us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Don't worry, let me introduce this next session. Let's have our seat. Um, yes, I want to introduce this next session even before I, because I want to tell us why we are doing this. We're going to break our seven to two, and we're going to have thirty minutes of uh, of engagement together. And I try to it capturing and nurturing next generation for Christ. Capturing and nurturing next generation for Christ. What God wants to do, like I was, I was telling us, our children, our teenagers. You must not lose them. In the name of Jesus. Our youth, we must not lose them. So the next generation that we want to capture and not show them that our youth, our teenager, and our children. So once we deliberate now, we want to now see how do we capture them. 
How do we nurture them for Christ? So those are the things that we want to do. We must not leave them behind. We must not. That book of Joel, he said that on the last day, it shall come to pass. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You see where, who started it? Your sons and who? Your daughters. They are the one. No matter how all of us, we are so serious, we are so, we are near to our retiring age. We are near, I know that we have few of us that are still young, but no matter how young you think you are, there are those children, there are those young people that if we do not know how to capture them, they can still be lost. And many of us, you know, most of the time we are careful about ourselves and we forget those children. So we want to see how do we capture them. We want to reason together. So please, when you, or all of us, I know my wife and thinking, please, because after this, we're going to have um, we're going to have a write-up to show us a guidelines. We want to come up with something that will let us be able to pass this anointing onto them. That will let us be able to pass this grace onto them. We want to have that workable write-up. Is it communicated that they call it? Is it writing, Mr. Yes. Huh? Yes. They communicate when you are here. We want to have a communicate. Doctor, am I, is it right? <laughs> you know, I, I'm not ashamed. I know I, my English is limited. But, uh, so we want to have something that, you know, we can give all of us as minister because we are going to champion it. Even though I know we're going to give to our teenager teacher, our children people, our youth people, for all of us, and that's why the minister, that's why I put that copy that we, we are, that one we must not fail. We must capture them. And that is what we want to do deliberate. How do we capture them? How do we not show them? And the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So let me start with um start 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 to you, you are one, Brian, you are two, sister, sister, you uh, sister Julia, you are one, sister you are two, Mumlu Timi, you are one, take me some. Ola no, you are two. Pastor Ola no, you are one. Sister Ebele, you are one. Dickness, you are two. Have I put one minute to me? Yeah. Okay. You are one, you are two. Then I'll pray. Uh, you are one. Rokola, you are two. Sister Gossi, you are one. Royika, you are two. Did I put you one? Okay, so you are one. Bro, Sheriff, you are one. Pastor Adedeji, you are two. Sister Wumi, you are one. Brother Bi, you are two. I think we are complete. So let one go to the back there, then let two come to the front here. Uh, is it, who does that go to the back? One. One, okay, two come here. So one go to the back, two. Let's just form. So, Brother Kati, you are two. You are going to the back. My wife, you are come to the, yeah, you are going to the back. Uh, it's one is going to oh sorry sorry one you are going so please two come to the front please let's come together in a way that we can if possible we form a circle I think that's so let's do that quickly Yeah, please form a circle. I think it would be better for us to form a circle. We can sit down together.
particularly are to get the premium to ourselves, to let us put them together, get ideas from them, and learn from them. When you know what they are doing, then you know how to approach them when they are going outside the business.
sorts of courses. Pay for the courses. Pay that each time. They will come to you there and they will come to you. Thank you for that. The last question. I'm running through because of time. And I want us to go through some things.